amove.tv. Check out Amove TV for more podcasts covering Blizzard games. For more Jocelyn's gaming podcasts, visit jossplays.com. And to find many more podcasts with Ridiculous Hat, follow at Ridiculous Hat on Twitter. Every episode of TAC is made possible thanks to our legendary patrons over at patreon.com slash TAC. Time's up. Let's do this. You smell like a leopard gnome! I knew it! So hot! A podcast about Hearthstone and Battlegrounds. This is The Angry Chicken! Greetings and welcome back, everyone, including me! This is the Angry Chicken. I'm Garrett Weinzerl here, as always, with Jocelyn Carney and Ridiculous Hat for the uh, probably not the one and only Hearthstone podcast that's going to say fire fucking Bobby Kotick this week. Fire that piece of human garbage now. I mean, if he quit, it's fine. Yeah, that would be fine, too. I mean, yeah, yeah. I really want to read a headline, though, that says Bobby Kotick fired. Not, not... Uh, not Bobby Kotick uh, uh, made his own decision and left. <laughs> I, want, I really Bobby want to Kotick not see his face again. Out. So, like, however we have to not see his face, the mechanism irrelevant to me, just, like, I want a different face. I'm, I'm front-loading this, by the way, so that if we feel the need, like I did, to drop some fuck bombs, that it's at the top of the show in case we feel like putting in the effort to edit it. But, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. By the way, listeners, there's a warning. This episode's going to be not safe for work, so. <laughs> <laughs> Just I like working at Activision Blizzard. Two minutes ago. <laughs> not oh, so oh Garrett. <laughs> Oof. Oof. I mean, you're Oof. not wrong. <laughs> yeah, have, appara- apparently, apparently you can't even right be a here. flight attendant and, uh, and, and not get horribly harassed or threatened. Yeah, it's uh, there were some quite unfortunate revelations this week although to be completely honest i don't think that there is anyone who should be too surprised about everything that we heard coming out of the wall street journal article um if you haven't seen it it's i mean it's all over twitter there's threads and all kinds of screen grabs and stuff because i think it is behind a paywall but uh, the information's out there now if you're interested in looking into it i will say there's some pretty graphic um depictions of events at and around uh, Bobby Kotek and Activision Blizzard. So um, a listener discretion is advised or reader discretion is advised. But um, I mean, knowing how um, how the company operated and everything we found out in July, I don't think that this report was necessarily surprising or shocking in any way. Um, he basically knew what was going on. HR covered up some horribly awful things. And it's just yet another reminder that HR is never on the side of the worker. So. No, no, apparently not, uh, especially at Activision Blizzard. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's like one of those moments where, I don't know, like I had a pretty garishly cartoon thoughts in my mind about just how villainous Bobby Kotick is, like, like jokey levels, where even in my own mind, I'm like, he's probably not that bad. This is the first time I've really ever been like, oh, wow, it's as bad as I could have possibly imagined. It's not worse. It, it meets my ex- horrible expectations, and that's a, that's a bummer. So The thing that surprises me the most, the most pleasant surprise, is that this has retained media traction and that the employees have continued to push it with some measure of results. So, like, power to the people. Um you know the the every blizzard employees they they did a walkout with like three hours notice yesterday uh and they work from home so like they don't even have a place to walk out it's more of a drive to than a walk out um but <laughs> like <very> true <laughs> but they made it happen because they're mad as hell and it's the second time the hearthstone team has had really really great work completely torpedoed by you know Awful Activision nonsense. Blizzard news. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Cartoon it's, villains. I've seen some. Yeah. I've seen some like borderline conspiratorial conversation going around. It's like I think yeah. they plan this every time. I'm like, no. It's just it's literally the Blizzard game that has the most frequent major updates. That is all there is to this. Like there is always a new major release from Hearthstone, constantly. 
Uh, yeah, the... so it's going to impact the Hearthstone team at some point, uh, much more likely to impact the Hearthstone team anyways than any other team at Blizzard. So it's very it's unfortunate timing. I mean, I'm glad that all the information has come out, but I definitely feel for the devs on Team 5 because I know that they put a lot of work into um, both Stormwind and now Alterac Valley and uh, to see it just decimated by the idiotic actions of an asshole it's very frustrating. <laughs> it's frustrating as, as a fan looking in, and I'm sure it's frustrating as a dev looking out. So I'm, I'm just going to jot down idiotic actions of an asshole um, <laughs> for no particular <laughs> reason. <laughs> yeah. And while we're here, by the way, the WoW Classic team also did a major update yesterday with the mastery stuff, and they also got stepped on. It's It was a day that was supposed to be be a positive press day about the products that developers have been working on. Instead, the conversation once again became about someone that doesn't add value to the company, but takes it away and instead also has a bunch of money. So sucks. Um, I, I, we are going to keep mentioning it because it's important to stay mad and boy, we are, but also we want to bring uh, light amazing work that our friends on, uh, on team five are doing. So we're going to talk about it, but yeah, stay mad. And if you decide not to pre-order, I know what I said last week about justifying it, but also at this point, like, if you say that's enough, I totally understand. Again, it's a personal choice, but at this point, it's becoming easier and easier to justify not giving this company any money. So I'm not going to say that I'm in that boat because they made a bunch of sweet Gundam skins and I am weak as a human. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but if if you don't spend money, then I respect that totally. Um, yeah. But the team is doing it, good work. Like my, my final kind of final thought here at this like off the cuff top of the show bit is, is um, like... Your fans that you somehow still have um, would love nothing more than to not be angry about the stuff. And we like are dying for fun. We are literally dying for fun. I just want to have fun. I just like, um, I don't think, and, and now to get into the content creation side of things, I don't think any content creator anywhere that decided I'm going to make regular bullshit for video games, like ever thought to themselves that they would be suddenly thrust into like legal sexual harassment journalism. Um, but if you make blizzard content and you cover this stuff, uh, that's where you're, you now find yourself and that's where we now find ourselves. Uh, and it sucks uh, and I'm done and I'm sick of it. And I just so badly want to geek out and get back to the community fun side of, which is the whole reason I got into this in the first place. Um, and, and like you're making it so hard, like so extremely hard to move on, uh, because this is cartoonishly villainous. Like that's, that's what that wall street journal expose on Bobby Kotick is. This man is evil. Uh, and, I, I, I'm just, I'm flabbergasted. And for the love of God, I just, I just want to like, I, I showed up to talk about dumb things and I would like to please let me go back to talking about dumb things, not to make it overly personal, but just kind of the, kind of the thoughts going around my head. And it's like, just, yeah, we can't stop talking about it. Like I'm, I am really glad that folks haven't let it go by the wayside. But like when it's this heinous, yeah, like what else can you do but collectively scream into the void? <laughs> it was very frustrating to see the response of the board and their support of Bobby Kotek after everything so, came out. Yeah, um, some of the board, right? I guess it's a majority of the board, but there's mm -hmm. also board members calling for Kotek to be fired. Yes. Um, I think it's the same board members that have already been critical. Um it's a small yeah. group of shareholders. They're about 0.6% mm -hmm. of total shares, which is like some number of millions. It's a lot, but uh, there are a lot of shares out there. I saw <laughs> million Something shares. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, it seems like a lot, uh, like, but then when it's less than 1%, it's like, oh, there's a lot of Blizzard shares out there, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, but it's getting media traction. So again, it's the court of public opinion is the most powerful weapon. It is being waged heavily on uh, on the AVK leadership, particularly Bobby Kotick, including the uh, the the CEO of PlayStation, uh, Jim Ryan, came out today and said we find the executive response to the issues to be inadequate, and uh, you know Sony and Call of Duty are pretty involved. Uh, so it's really nice as well to see another company go out of their way to say that what you did isn't good enough, Activision, and that is unusual, I think. 
Um, again, and that, that one's a very heavy yeah. hitter too, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're big in a lot of ways that aren't just you know the PlayStation and and not just gaming. So, well, I mean, Sony that, um, was the ones who pulled Cyberpunk off the store and said, "No, your shit is a dumpster fire, and you need to fix your game." And so, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Pat, because when I saw that thing today, uh, that message from Sony today, I was like. I wonder if they'll go, your company is a dumpster fire and you better fix your shit because we're pulling your games from our store. Like that would be a really powerful move that might actually lead to some meaningful change. Yeah, I think those are the kind of actions that really do lead to meaningful change. I mean, I respect anyone who's decided not to give this company any more money, like Hat just said. Um, Like I agree with everything Hat said. Uh, and I think that it really takes others who have the same or more amount of money and influence to really start swinging their weight around on behalf of the workers and, and the fans and all of the women involved. So um, I don't know. I mean, we'll see where all of this goes. Um, I'm I'm hoping that, you know, honestly, I'm hoping that something good comes of this. But at the same time, I find it extraordinarily frustrating. Part of the news that came out yesterday was that the uh, co-lead of Blizzard, the female co-lead of Blizzard, uh, who was put into place after the lawsuit came to light, uh, still was not given equal pay to her male counterpart. And I'm yeah, just Jen like, O'Neil. that is such... Yeah, Jen O'Neill, yes. Um, was still not paid as much as the man in the exact same title and position. Uh, which is extraordinarily frustrating because that should have just been a fucking slam dunk. You know, like there's a huge lawsuit. We're it's putting incredible. a man and a woman in charge. We could just pay them the same and show that we've changed. You could ask, uh, you could ask Katie La- last night. I was like looking at my phone. And I just went, hmm. and she's like, what? I'm like, dude, like. If you're like some evil mastermind that's worth staying in power because you're just the CEO that rakes in money, which Kotick has, and I'm sure is why the majority of the board still wants to keep him in charge, uh, wouldn't you be smart enough to be like, there's two people. They are in the exact same position. People are really mad about one person not getting paid as much as the other person based on gender. I think... For a bare minimum to cover my ass, I should pay both of these people the same. <laughs> right? Like, wouldn't you? Th- like, uh, not that I wanted if anyone to get Jeopardy away with anything, but... If this was a Jeopardy category, I'll take not getting it for two hundred, Alex. Like, it, it's it's incredible. It's like if you were making a sitcom about the situation, the like cartoonishly evil dumb CEO would do this on television. And and then they would do this like funny sequence where it's like Patrick and SpongeBob, where you're like, okay, so you know there's inequality, and you know that you fix that by paying them the same. So shouldn't you pay them the same? And then Patrick would say, no, you pay her less. <laughs> it's it's very stupid. Yeah. So, anyways, those those are my thoughts there. Also, Jen O'Neill, total badass because the report also said that she was finally offered equal pay after saying that she was going to resign and she still resigned. And I think that's like such a baller move. So like t- telling people, I think I even tweeted or no, I was talking to Patrick subtweeting getting, uh, this is too technical. Um, <laughs> take your money and shove it is real powerful. Um, and yeah. I respect the hell out of that. So uh, it's, it's been wild. Um, there's no easy way to segue out of this. Um, but I just wanted to yell about it with my friends. Uh, Joss, would you like to yell about awesome esports that uh, was put on by a third party? I would actually, very much so. <laughs> so uh, I don't know how many of you know um, <laughs> that there was a global invitational event that happened last weekend that pitted uh, the four Hearthstone regions against each other. And it was organized by um, the, I believe it was the Blizzard China team. I'm sure, Hat, you can you can tell me if I'm wrong. I know it was organized by someone in China anyways. It was through the middle of the night. Oh, I it was Netties. Guess, so I'm it sorry. Was awesome. It was Netties. I, I did yeah. not okay. realize it was Netties, so it's not really a third party. Yeah, Ergo Pad in the party, chat room says, yeah. aren't they a two and it's, a half party? <laughs> Which is fair. <laughs> Netties, fair, yeah. fair. It's, it's complicated, but basically non-Chinese companies cannot operate in China, so you need right. some yeah. local company to run your property. So Netties does the Blizzard stuff in China. They do their own thing. They make their own stuff, but they also run Hearthstone in China. And if you've seen reports in the past about like the desktop add-on that they do for their LA test tournaments, with all the stat tracking and stuff that NetEase develops that. Yeah. 
Uh, so um, they had all four regions competing against each other in uh, battlegrounds and constructed and mercenaries. So each different uh, team member competed in one of the three disciplines. So they had teams of nine, I believe, for each region. And uh, I found it very entertaining to watch. Um, I was maybe a little sleep deprived, but still entertained. <laughs> <laughs> I caught I caught some key battlegrounds vods after the fact on on YouTube with, with whoever wanted to post it. Shout out Slissa, um, and the production was awesome. The production was, was absolutely yeah. insane. They did such a good job. I was really blown away. Um, I haven't really seen that level of production in anything since like pre-COVID times. Um, they did a really, really good job. Um, there were some pretty serious hiccups with mercenaries, particularly um, in the first couple of days of competition that resulted in some of the players having to um, have their matches postponed by four and five hours, which was a little bit of an issue. Well, a lot of bit of an issue uh, for people specifically in EU and in um, the Americas, just because their schedule was already starting at uh, like, I think in the case of EU, their, their whole day started at like one o'clock in the morning local time. So it was a it was a really, really tough schedule for them to upkeep. And then, you know, like pushing things four or five hours when you're not getting a lot of sleep. Uh, there were a lot of players who were really um, upset with the handling of the tournament itself, like from an administrative side, which uh, was a little bit unfortunate because uh, according to some of the players, they had been invited to the Invitational as they had been to every other Invitational event. And the problems were kind of twofold. They were handed off to, a, a, again, a two and a half party, a third party um, that wasn't the normal people they were used to dealing with at Blizzard, um, which made it feel like there was no one really advocating for them, even when they came up with reasonable solutions. Um, and then, um, yeah, so they, they had a lot of issues in that way, but also from the promotional side of things, this was as a fan, my big problem. I had no idea this was happening. The only thing that I saw tweeted out about this came from Slissa and because she's involved with team liquid, I very much thought that this was another Chinese event that she was involved in because she does go over and do different series, um, for Team Liquid, and that's why she gets invited. Yeah, and, and also and, we don't and you really can't watch those. <laughs> yeah, and we don't have regular battlegrounds competition in the states either, which is yeah, a shame that too. Yeah, um, because it's the one I want to watch the most. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's um, yeah, that made me not even that made me even less want to dig because I I just assumed I just assumed it was a third party. Now that I know it was like Betty's who was in a official relationship with blizzard it's even weirder that there was no promotion i mean mm -hmm. we haven't had an update in two months over on the heroes of the storm team and we're pretty sure the developers are in a blizzard dungeon for i don't know maybe they said <laughs> something bad about kotick to his face um we literally don't know where our devs are uh, but they're promoting a third party tournament on the blizzard launcher if you click on heroes of the storm they are they are promoting ccl which is mm. not put on by blizzard it's put on no. by heroes hearth and wisdom, and wisdom gaming, like the the fact that there was nothing uh, about this in an official capacity besides some tweets uh, was weird. Um, Wait, hold on, Garrett. Are you sorry. making the assumption that Bobby Kotick knows who the hot developers are? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Good point. But yeah, so. Um, the play the play Hearthstone account did begin tweeting um, on the final day after there was quite a lot of um, conversations being had by the players being upset about and a lot of feedback being given about the lack of promotion and the um, HS Esports account was retweeting the players not putting out their own content, which is also very frustrating because it's a departure from what they've done for other invitationals in the past. And a lot of these players, especially with this crazy schedule, which they did sign up for, but they make that uh, they sign those contracts with the understanding that it can grow their channel and grow their visibility. And it really didn't do that. <laughs> so they're, um, 
they weren't even like replaying the tournament during like regular hours <laughs> for North America. It was only on, it was on Twitch, which is how I found it. Cause I was literally at like 2 AM going, okay, what can I watch? Oh, play Hearthstone is streaming on Twitch. What is this nonsense? <laughs> the time so, time difference a dream? may have played a role, right? But I, I don't mm -hmm. know, like still like, if there's something to so, launch her about it. There were complications going on here because Lissa talked about this on her stream. This was originally a 10-day event, but yes. they moved it to a four-day event because the original venue had COVID lockdown. And Bunny Hopper was, uh, said he had issues with connectivity on the constructed side. And the days just there went really, really tons long. Of issues. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, 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 American, yeah. The, the American Battlegrounds team straight up had a game where they didn't get into the lobby until turn two and a restart yeah. was not allowed. On the final day. Yeah. Uh, uh, I know that replaying the yeah. lobby. They did. Oh, they did. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I must have not seen the follow up tweet. Yeah, that is that is one thing that I think um, the organizers and also the Chinese players specifically, because um, it did come down to an NA China final. Uh, sorry, not NA. I should say Americas, because <laughs> it's not just North America. Um, and so it did come down to those uh, two groups in the final and. They were very understanding about um, account problems and connection issues, and there were quite a few um, concessions made for teams who were outside of China. So I think that um, they did the kind of best that they could in a rather large undertaking. Like, we haven't seen a tournament like this in quite a while, if ever. And I kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit because I feel like it, this is almost like this is so close to what we've been talking about since kind of a hearthstone became a thing and we had like constructed an arena and then eventually constructed arena and wild saying wouldn't it be so cool if we had a tournament for the world champion where they had to perform in all of the different hearthstone disciplines which obviously has evolved over time and now the three most popular um not constructed, uh, competitive Hearthstone modes are Battlegrounds, um, standard constructed, and then Mercenaries now, whether you think that that's a, <laughs> a you know, like promotional thing or the way that Hearthstone competitive <laughs> is actually going uh, is, is a whole other debate for another day. But um, point being, we've wanted to see a multidisciplinary world championship for a really long time. And though this was teams, I think it would be really interesting to have a longer form tournament where you had to demonstrate that you could play multiple modes and that there was some sort of scoring that kind of went across the multiple disciplines in order to get our world champion. So I was really glad that they did this and I wanted to talk about it because I wanted to see what you guys thought of it, seeing the different disciplines all at once. Well, I mostly just watch Battlegrounds, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I watched Battlegrounds and Constructed and Mercenaries came on and I was like, Okay, I'll go to bed now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not invested because I'm, I'm. I'm not invested in playing PvP myself in Mercenaries, so I'm not mm -hmm. really invested in watching it either. Um, but I'd love to hear from those out there listening that are invested and in what you thought of it. So, hi Garrett, I'm invested. Oh, I like this. oh, <laughs> this shouldn't surprise me. Yeah, I I have played Mercenaries every day since launch, and I don't see that changing. Um, and I watched a bunch of Mercenaries competitive play. There was. Uh, this past weekend, my co-host Edelweiss on a different podcast that I do because I do multiple Hearthstone podcasts because I'm a crazy person was over here and we were we were up to an uh, to gamer o'clock and we were flipping between the ATK mode. Uh, uh, there was a mercenaries tournament and then the the global invitational because in the final day APAC was knocked out early, so Gia was casting the final day. And for those of you that don't know Gia, you should know Gia. Yes. exceptional player she's on the leaderboards for mercs along like she's good at every hearthstone thing um and she was casting it and she's a really really well-informed caster and it was super fun to watch but it sucks the first day the day went so long because they had to pack 10 days into four and connectivity issues were happening all day but especially bad with mercenaries in the first day they got better later but construction issues got and battlegrounds in the last day like it wasn't format specific uh i i enjoyed watching it the same way that i enjoyed watching every part of this tournament that didn't have connection issues. But the problem is every single format got their turn there. Yeah. Uh, so it's every part of the production was great, but it wasn't reliable enough because the, the organizers were dealing with the last minute venue and the community team who normally does the promotion and player coordination swapped out two people, which is like half the team 
within the past three weeks. Uh, I know that Alkali just started, uh, Celso just started like last Friday, brand new to the team, and their normal liaison left the team the week before, and that was two weeks before the event was going to be planned, and also the day that the event was supposed to start on the original 10-day schedule. So everything was thrown to disarray at the very last minute. It sucked, but watching the actual gameplay was cool. And, you know, I like watching informed casters, and I'm very impressed that Gia is so informed already, but I'm also not surprised because she's good at video games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, very true. So, so yeah, I, en- I enjoyed it. I really liked it. I hope that we see more multidisciplinary tournaments, whether they're team events or, or individuals. Yeah. It, I, I enjoyed it as well. I haven't watched her Sports in a long time, and I made it a point to go watch some of this because uh, I heard it was cool, and then I watched it, and I can confirm was very cool. So I will say um, the one thing that made Mercs really hard for me to watch is that um, the client, across all three disciplines, but the client was in Chinese, and I don't read yes. Chinese. So for a format that I was unfamiliar with, it was a very difficult <laughs> to know what was yeah, going on. <laughs> it's a problem with international connectivity, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, like I mean, it just it's one of those things that like for my first exposure to a mercenary tournament, like maybe I should have done a little bit more uh tournament seeking out or mercenary uh streamers, like watching mercenary streamers because yeah, I was I was super lost and so therefore my attention waned, but uh, but I still think it's cool, and I'm really glad, Hat, that you're so invested in the mode and you're really enjoying it. Like, I'm glad that there are people like you out there that are really, really enjoying it. So, well, Thanks. I'm, I'm glad there are people like me out there too. But uh, <laughs> also, I will say, I watched the same night. I watched a fully English America server PvP tournament of mercenaries, and I was also lost because the <laughs> mode is five head. And brand new. It's a month old. Yeah. How long did it take us to figure out Battlegrounds? I, some would say that we're still figuring it out. How long did it take us to figure out Constructed? Seven years. Uh, there's. It's really, really, really new. You have to play so much right now to even have the PvP mercs, let alone know what they're going to do and talk about breakpoints. Mm-hmm. And so it's just, it was very ambitious to have a full esports event for this mode so early. I'm glad they tried it, but I'm not surprised people felt lost. Even if you're if you're watching it in your native language, it's still very difficult right now. Mm-hmm. Rad. Well, um, we have a lot of other stuff to talk about today, so we're gonna move the intro. into that. We haven't heard the patrons yet. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna move into that. But before we do, we're gonna thank those of you supporting us over at Patreon.com/tac. We hope you liked the cussing and the esports talk today. If you like cussing, go to Patreon.com/tac. And uh, support the show. If you don't like cussing, also go to patreon.com slash TAC because we usually we don't do it so much. Either way, you, you win. This week, we have new patrons, multiple new patrons that we want to thank, starting with Dump Truck. <laughs> and I don't know why that makes me laugh, but they just wrote <laughs> Dump Truck, and I love that. It's great. Fun nickname? <laughs> I just like the, the image in my head of a dump truck creating a Patreon account. <laughs> It's, it's great. It's wonderful. Um, also, Stein R. Jelstad is how I'm going to choose to pronounce that. Hopefully, uh, Mr. Wiener Schnitzel here didn't butcher your last name too much. And Ramanil, thank you for the support to our three latest patrons. If you're out there listening and you like what we do here at The Angry Chicken and you want to support us, patreon.com slash TAC is an opt-in way to do so. We've got some levels there dollar or more, but you can also work. You can uh, like put in whatever you want, whatever amount works for you works for us. Check it out. Come join us in the patron only discord. Uh, and now let's get into this week's Hearthstone news and talk about fun, fun, new things that make me want to put on a coat. Cause I live in Florida and this expansion looks cold. Good news, everyone. We have an expansion announcement. I've left for a week. There's been a mini set, a balance change, more balance changes to the mini set. I don't even really know what's going on other than like top decks are still kind of things we've already been playing. Uh, And now we've got an expansion announcement. Uh, Fractured in Alterac Valley releases December 7th. I I gotta make a turkey next week. Could we slow down a little bit, please? (laughs) 
<laughs> well, they can't actually slow down because they got to get it out before Christmas. <laughs> Did you just say they got to get it up before Christmas? Got to get it out. <laughs> it sounded like up. It sounded like up. That's Court stenographer. In the gutter. <laughs> but, but so wait a minute, Garrett. You were AFK in Alterac Valley, and now you don't know what's going on. They hit it exactly right. Oh, oh, it's thematic. It's working. <laughs> the gate opened, and I'm just standing there as 39 other people run out the door and start yelling at each other. 39. Someone's optimistic. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, seven other people are still standing at the gate with me. <laughs> And then they come to, and they still take time to pick up the mana biscuits before they mount up and ride off. Uh, don't forget your I'm lock not going cookies, anywhere everybody. without cookies. Not, neither am I. You gotta, you gotta get those cookies. Those, those warlocks worked hard for that. Uh, if it was pre Wrath of the Lich King. Anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, lore wise, the Horde and Alliance are going to be clashing. This makes sense. The Mercs were Horde. They were Alliance. Uh, even though before I left, we were talking about the fact that up until now they haven't really played on the Horde v Alliance thing all that much. Um, but they're going for it now. Uh, it's going to be 135 new cards with a new keyword called honorable kill, which the way that works is that it's a, a you get a bonus effect if the card with honorable kill on it deals exact lethal damage to enemy minions. And we have seen uh, both minions and weapons with this keyword. Yeah, is this, this a is new a... keyword or new keywords? It's two words. Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm asking. I, I want to be Pat consistent. Is in a mood tonight. He is in a. I mean, so are you. You are, one are Jocelyn we... told me to get my mind out of the gutter, which frankly is the most absurd thing I've heard all day. So are we not all mood? Are we not vibing? I think we're all in a mood tonight. Yeah, I had an old fashioned in the first ten minutes of this episode. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll sip um, on this. Nope. Nope. We, uh, I started talking uh, Kotick and, and that drink disappeared the very quickly. Began. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. I need a water. Um, uh. Anyways, uh, we also kind of, I don't know what to call these. What do we, have, we, have we coined a name for not keywords? Because there's always one every expansion where they're like, it's a theme of cards. Other words? <laughs> other other words. <laughs> they're themes. not keywords. They're other words. We'll call them key slang. There you, you know, go. It's not quite words. Uh, yeah, but there's a new like card sub theme called objectives, and the, they're described as spells with effects that last for three turns. If your spell effect lasts for three turns, consult a witch doctor. Tisk tisk. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're damn right I'm not. <laughs> Um, uh, not at launch today, uh, players get to choose a Horde or Alliance legendary. Your choice is between, of course, Drek'thar or Stormpike. So who, should, did, who did you guys choose? Uh, you should pick Stormpike because Alterac Valley is still Alliance biased. So pick the one that's going to win. Wow. Wow. I picked for the Horde, like a true Horde member. Ah. <sighs> I'm going to need to just start a new podcast or something. I just can't be here with these Alliance shill. Uh, I finally... well, hold on a second. Loke Tar. All right. Do not group me with him. <laughs> okay. But, all right. So hold on. But let's pause for a second here. You couldn't click out of this. And there are a yeah. bunch of people that I've spoken to that are like, why do I have to decide right now? And you get the other one of these for free in three weeks. So if you see a cool deck with the one you didn't pick, and you want to play it, I guess you don't get to do that. Um, I'm hopeful that they reverse course here and give us the other one a little bit earlier, maybe before Thanksgiving. I think that'd be cool, because otherwise, the there are some decks in this meta right now. They're not good decks, but right? The choice here is not <laughs> like competitive, because neither of these cards are all that great. But if you see a cool deck with the one you didn't choose, you will never get a chance to play that deck in this meta, because you don't have it. You can't craft it. And this meta is not going to exist ever again. So I'm surprised that they made a choice with this significant FOMO this early. I love the mechanic and the idea, but three weeks and never getting a chance to try the one you didn't choose in this meta seems a, uh, I don't know, a little sketchy. Week one, you should get one. Week two, you should get the other. Week three, make a choice. Sure. That doesn't sound like a total pain in the ass. That's probably way harder to code and make a reality <laughs> than I understand. 
Yeah, I think I also, understand yes. what they were going for from a lore perspective because Alterac Valley is a battleground. It is Horde versus Alliance. It's it's this big epic thing that's been in World of Warcraft since vanilla. Like I understand the choose your side, but I completely get from a from a gameplay mechanics standpoint hat that you of what you're saying about the the current meta and how this is never going to exist again. And so you are really missing out. And the other piece about these is that it it gives you a message that's like a warning message that says um, something along the lines of uh, this is the side you will fight for through your time in Alterac or something like that. That's like just super vague. And when you're making this and then you have to say like, yes, I'm OK with that. And it's just like, how do I know I'm OK with that? I have no idea what that means. <laughs> and like you say, you can't click out of it. You have to make this choice. So I was just kind of like, well, I'm horde through and through, so I'm going to choose my faction. And like, I don't know if I'm going to play either of these cards, but does it have a greater effect, like a bigger impact, a larger impact on my game? I don't know. Like, I'm pretty I sure it doesn't really know what this what but, this means. <laughs> yeah, but that that flavorful description makes it sound like it does. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, it is. It is strange. It is strange. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. All I know is the cropping on Drek'thar is weird. You can't see his wolfies; they're getting cut off. Mm-hmm. That's that's mm-hmm. my, which that's my uh, hopefully the most extreme nit I will pick today. <laughs> and and but, there yeah. is a mechanic about uh, about horde versus alliance about the side you pick. You can farm players like if you beat players from the other faction, then you earn honor on Blizzard side, and then we get a diamond of whichever one uh wins at the end of the expansion so there's some like i'm not gonna call it gameplay impact there's kind of sort of an impact there i don't think that they're gonna make two diamonds and then throw one in the trash so i'm sure there will be another way to acquire the other one at some point but there is kind of a it's a lore mechanic wait are you, are you, are you so you're assuming uh, that this is like a super bowl champion shirts that they're all made and and half of them just get <laughs> dumped the day after no you're saying uh, either that or the last time we had a like Horde v Alliance do something thing from Blizzard, it was, or at least the last one I remember, for some sort of in game asset. Which, do you remember that motorcycle show? American, I think it was American Chopper. Oh, for the mountain in and World the, of Warcraft. And yes. And they built the, the Alliance one and the Horde one, and then the community had to vote. And then the one that won was given to that faction. They did. So the Horde one won. So we all got our Horde uh, motorcycles in game. And then the Alliance one. Uh, was available in game, but cost like some absurd amount of gold at the time. I can't remember what it was, but everyone complained. Um, so they did have like the assets of both were made available to the player base, um, but one of them was free and one of them had some sort of in-game cost. So I'm sure that, like you say, they're not going to make they're not going to only make one diamond card. I think they probably have both in the wings and uh, will make it available to us somehow. I mean, we haven't yet been crafting diamond cards and I hate to give them this idea, but like if the cost of crafting a diamond card was like much much higher than a, than a legendary or something or on par with a golden legendary, maybe that's the way to go. I don't know, but uh, I could see this being a dust cost or possibly a gold cost, like a thousand gold or something for one specific card. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it, I looked up, it's January 11th is anyway. when this happens. It's January 11th is when the event ends. So I don't know, maybe when it comes time for rotation, I, I think that asking for more money for cosmetics would be a bad idea from the Hearthstone team right now because like they have a lot of cosmetics and they're asking for a lot of stuff for them. Um, yeah, and again, I'm, I'm at my limit ones for super how much I can spend on cosmetics in, uh, in Hearthstone yeah, right now. Do- There's... Oh, too many. The skin packs are over my pain threshold for for price, yeah. like one hundred percent. They are too expensive. Um, yeah, I, I, and there's so yeah. many they, of them that it's yeah. like I could maybe justify that cost if they did something really cool every like six months or something. But it seems like every time I open the game now, there's a new set of skins, and I'm just like, I cannot be spending this kind of money once a month. Like, and so I'm glad that those cosmetics exist. But um, yeah, I'm definitely at the point now where the completionist in me is getting very upset. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible. It's just it not like it's just not realistic. Yeah. 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 If you 
have a budget, you need to abandon <laughs> completionist yeah. in, in Hearthstone, at least when it comes to, uh, to, to the cosmetics for sure. It's a little, uh, it's a little rough. It's a little rough. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, this is probably as good a time as ever to start talking about cards. We've got quite a few to talk about. So let's, my, let's just kick it off with Drek'thar and, uh, Storm Pike. I never knew he had a first name. <laughs> <laughs> no advance for no storm pike out of first name. Uh, anyway, let's talk about Drakthar, uh, the one the majority of Angry Chicken hosts chose. A four mana, four four, legendary neutral minion with a battle cry that reads If this costs more than every minion in your deck, summon two of them. That's the way I went, the aggro way. <laughs> so we should clarify the wording because this wording is not clarified, it's confusing. Um, if How this so? costs it, so there were a bunch of people that thought you get two four fours if you meet this condition that you summon two Drekthars, two more Drekthars. That's not what happened. Oh, no, you summon two of the minions that exist in your deck. Yes, for, okay. what for those of means. you old players, you recruit two. Yes, um, <laughs> but yeah, if so, You're and it doesn't work on top for that, <laughs> if only it's not gonna get it. We, we're, we're like 40 minutes in, we don't have time for that yeah, discussion, no, but no. so. Both of these are they you it's either less than four or more than four, neither of them lets you have any fours. But if you have threes or less in your deck for minions, then you yoink two out of the deck and put him in play. Uh, and yes, it is very aggressive. Uh, yeah, and the other thing that we should point out too is that it is specific to minions. Both of these cards, the Alliance and the Horde cards, are specific to minions. So you can have cards in your deck that cost more than four or less than four. It's just they have to occupy spells. Also, these are battle cries, not start of game effects. So if you want to take the chance, and if you want to have some minions that cost more than four or some minions that cost less than uh, than four, you could do that and wait to play these until you've drawn those minions and they are then active. But that's like putting a double in your Highlander deck and probably not yeah. the best way to play. <laughs> and also, yeah, Drek'thar seems aggressive, right? So, like, do you want to yes. load your deck up with more expensive things and then potentially need to wait to play Drek'thar? Like, I don't want to wait to play a card oh, no, I that, play this on four. <laughs> that summons things that cost less than four. Like, the yeah. longer the game goes, the less impactful Drek'thar is combos that don't currently exist and I'm not foreseeing uh, aside. Mm-hmm. Very specific combos. Aside. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify the wording and how this works because lately we have seen cards with this kind of deck building effect say things like start of game. And so I wanted to just point out that this is a battle cry. So yeah. it will happen and be activated some point during the game, not a, a deck building condition that's evaluated at the, at the beginning. These remind me very much of Gen and Baku in spirit, if not in application. Yeah. It's yeah. like if those cards were terrible. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. So let's talk about the other yeah. terrible card. Uh, Storm Pike, 4 mana, 4-4, four, four, legendary neutral minion. Battle cry, if this costs less than every minion in your deck, reduce their cost by three. So, hey, who wants a, who who wants to give up one, two, and three drop minions? And four. And, and four, sorry, yeah. and four. <laughs> and then play minions after that. Looking at you, he's like no minion mage. <laughs> like, like what? What is? The, yeah, these are these are strange cards. Well, I think so, maybe th- this card goes in a deck that we haven't seen a lot of lately. <laughs> Something in the control realm, maybe that has a ooh. lot of like big bombs. And one of the complaints of uh, control players, and one of the reasons why a lot of people insist that control doesn't really exist right now is because the game is very, very quick in comparison to previous metas. So this makes your control tools and your big bomb minions happen three turns earlier. That seems good. (laughs) Maybe you'll actually get to control things now. (laughs) So I'm glad you brought that up, Joss, because in the first 45 minutes of news, we didn't get to cover that they nerfed a bunch of stuff in standard already yesterday yep. uh, we talked about the nurse because we got the advanced notification but this expansion is kind of doing what dark moon fear wanted to do uh which is make bigger cards better and a lot of the cards that we're going to talk about are in the are are 
This set's all about big, powerful things, and we have a bunch of those revealed already, and I'm very excited to talk about them. But typically, when you add more cards to the format, it gets faster, not slower. That explains why they made a lot of the nerfs to things like Mage and Garot Rogue, but also explains why you're going to see cards like this, because they're nerfing the stuff that isn't about minions, so that when you print a card like Mr. Smite, you actually make taunt and healing better, and it's all about, can I build a deck that's removal, taunt, healing, and then something cool and flashy at the end, as opposed to, do I have to be really aggressive, low to the ground, and proactive to end the game before my opponent ends me? And I like that they're going for that, and both of these cards are kind of like, they're the two sides of the same coin. Do I go under or over? Vandar is probably the more interesting for deck building, but also really sketchy because if you whiff on him, your deck is all expensive stuff. And also, I know some of you at home are thinking, because I thought the same thing, I'm going to put this in my big warrior deck, then you commencement, and then you summon a 4-4, then you concede the game. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. It's not worth it. Uh, but I, I like that they're trying to make a six-set meta more minion-heavy, but also that's very ambitious because historically that hasn't been what's happened. I like big, powerful minions, and I cannot lie. Fair. I'm glad you went there. <laughs> Let's skip past neutrals, get into class, and then maybe we'll circle back around on neutrals if we're feeling spicy. Um, which I guess start. Wait, starts with hunter or are the class is not in alphabetical order. Damn it! I think you're you're looking at most recent instead uh, of a card name. If you go card name A to Z, it'll put them in. Because that order just you're sort expecting. by give there me a go. sort by class button so it does the thing that I expect it to do. Please and thank <laughs> I you. I bet someone could like write up a project on the UI of this website. They'd probably do really well on it. <laughs> Thank you for outing me that I used the failings of the Hearthstone website as a case study in my master's, and I got a 100 on it. It's, I'm just saying, we, we, we live and breathe Hearthstone, <laughs> even in our schoolwork, even outside of our podcast lives. Yeah, I enjoyed UX class. That was fun. Uh, Demon Hunter, let's kick it off with the one Demon Hunter card that's been revealed so far, Flag Runner. Never been a fan of capture to the flag in most games, but flag runner is a three mana one six common that reads whenever a friendly minion dies, gain plus one attack flag runner. I mean, I guess it's all that running. They've got a really big booty <laughs> six oh my health. God. My goodness. Is, yeah. That is pretty beefy. I mean, this is like more support for token demon hunter, which has always been like beast druid used to be like, it's so close and we keep getting a couple of tools, but this probably isn't enough unless there's a lot more token support in this expansion. But uh, that's definitely where my brain goes with this I mean, demon hunter. But like, this is a good rate. It's so, okay. You two been around for a while. You remember Darkshire Council. Ex excuse you. I am the yeah, youngest one on the podcast. Thank you very much. I'm not saying you've been alive for a while. I'm just saying you've been around Hearthstone, the Hearthstone for a while. Here. <laughs> yes. Darkshire Councilman, three mana, one five. Whenever you you summon a minion, gain plus one attack. This is a little bit harder to activate, but it's got an extra point of butt to make up for it. If you're able to 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 get a couple minions to die, this is pretty powerful. Uh, we've got the sigil of summoning now. The the two mana sigil that when it wakes up, you get two 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 taunts. Right. Uh, if you do that into Flag Runner, that's a pretty good board i don't know this is this is the kind of uh support card that i could absolutely see make the deck work or at least have some busted openings and at least when you have some busted curves that's when you start to think about how can i make this happen reliably i mean this is, is a pretty big part of that sorry i'm laughing at daryl in chat saying you're not old you've just been alive a really long time <laughs> i'm gonna say on my next it's... birthday daryl is smart yeah uh, no, I'm excited about Flag Runner. Um, token Demon Hunter is something that I was excited about the very first time I played Eyes Upon Demon Hunter, um, and then it released, and uh, it was so good at everything but tokens that uh, we just didn't worry about it too much. But maybe we'll get there. Uh, you ready to talk hero cards? Yes! Oh my, wow, Joss, you are stoked. Uh, I, have you been playing honestly, Druid? Honestly, and so I didn't know it? No, 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 no. I'm just so excited that hero cards 
for all the classes are back and it's in a third expansion of the year so if it's ridiculously crazy overpowered we only have like 15 months of it where it's totally crazy uh, but i am just i am so excited everybody gets a hero card yay <laughs> you get a hero card you get a hero card <laughs> druid gets a hero card it's the best hero because it's guff and guff gets owls that he gets to look at and he's really stoked about and this art is really wholesome and it gives me life um sorry i should probably mention what the card does for the audio yeah. listeners wild heart guff is a five mana five armor legendary hero card for druid that reads battle cry set your maximum mana to 20 gain a mana crystal draw a card and this also changes your hero power to be a two mana hero power that lets you choose between those two effects so you can either gain a mana crystal or draw a card every turn it's a full mana crystal it's not an empty one right well that would make sense at least on the play bonus right because you setting your max mana to uh your to i cheated that's what you're setting it to um this is this is absolutely bananas yeah setting it not that i think that like of all the effects on this card and and the things that i think make guff good the maximum mana cap of 20 i don't think that that's I don't think it's ever going to be very relevant. <laughs> like, I think it's it's one of those moments that makes you go like, Pog, what? <laughs> but I don't think that it's actually really ever going to come into play. Now, um, there might be some druid cards that take advantage of this. Maybe some stuff that's super crazy that costs 15 that you'll actually be able to play because you'll be guff and you'll have 15 available mana crystals. Like... There could be some craziness. We know nothing about this expansion's druid except for this hero card. Um, and there was another neutral that was um, revealed just before the show that I jokingly called the guff payoff card. You, you, I mean, you want to talk about it right now? You want to, you want, oh, sure. Where'd the yeah, neutrals go? Talk about uh, them in, in tandem. Sure. Let's, let's just bring it up. You're talking about Ivis? Yes, yes. The right. one mana, one, one. Yeah, <laughs> it's Ivis. like a forbidden card, but but different. <laughs> yeah, Ivis the Forest Lord, as Joss mentions, one mana, one, one, legendary neutral. Battle cries, spend the rest of your mana and gain plus two, plus two. Rush, divine shield, or taunt at random for each. Yeah, so obviously the rush and divine shield yeah. and taunt, you can only get once, right? So then it's just going to yes. be how many times are you lucky enough to roll the plus two plus two buff after that point when you've already gotten the other three. So there's definitely a diminishing returns kind of a thing going on potentially, but uh, yeah, still it's very reminiscent of the the forbidden cards that we've seen in the past where it's spend all the rest of your mana and do a thing depending on how much you had left. And the plus two plus two stacks. So like if yeah. you've got more mana, then it just gets, it just big. It's just large. I actually think the diminishing returns are up front because you get the keywords. It's you don't want to play this early because if you play this on turn three and you hit taunt okay, divine sorry. shield. So Celestalon is saying that there are no diminishing returns because if so you can't get or like once you've got the keywords, you can only roll the buff. Okay, yeah. Oh, well, yes, I thought you said words. that. Yeah. No, sorry, no, yeah, I, I, yeah, I thought we were all on the same page about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's... no, sorry, that was my misunderstanding. <laughs> Yeah, no, the, so the keywords so are once only, so... And, yeah, yeah, okay. But you, your first roll is almost certainly going to get a keyword because you have a 75% chance to, you know, four things in the box, then the 66% chance after you get one, then 50% chance to get the last one. I haven't done the math. I would guess you're pretty likely to get all three keywords around five or six mana, uh, but you are you really don't want to play this early because you play this in turn three. If you hit Taunt, Divine Shield, congratulations, you have a three mana Righteous Protector. That's not a good deal. We pay one mana for that in Paladin. You don't want to pay three mana for that. But later in the game, five, six, seven, you're a lot more likely to get it. But if you played around turn four, you've got like this unreliable corpse taker thing going. You don't really want to be an unreliable corpse taker. So you might end up with a three, three. You might you might have a one, one <laughs> that's a gonna... rush divine shield. I, think you're gonna, I didn't think you were going to add taker. They were just going to call this an unreliable corpse. No, the card corpse taker was a card. And I, I know, I know, but it's just even funnier. If you're just, yeah, it's just an un unreliable dead husk <laughs> yeah, well, no it, it's, it's it is someone who just meant to you know remove corpses but they're super unreliable so sometimes there's just a bunch of dead bodies lying around yeah. bring out <laughs> your dead I mean, if i feel like it 
It's a hard job. I don't know. I'm not here to judge. It's not what I'm doing. I work with the public too, except just... my public's alive. Like I don't even work with the dead public. They're heavy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> my God. All right. Well, I, I have something really excited about, especially in tandem with Wild Heart yes. Guff. <laughs> with Guff, if you can manage to get him to 15, 20 mana, then you can do something you'd want to do in your turn anyways, and then potentially have that seven, eight, nine mana left over and be able to to get a pretty beefy Ibis on board as well. So I think there's probably going to be some Guff shenanigans that are going to happen. And I think that just having the hero power to choose between drawing a card or increasing your mana is it's just it works really well in what druid wants to do anyway so um and it also i think opens up a lot of those like rampy big late druid type um strategies that we haven't seen in a while we've had pretty aggressive token based druid decks for a while so I think, I mean, the, you've got the armor here in the hero card, as well as, like I said, that, that mana ramp built into your hero card. So yeah, I think this is, this is really interesting. And I, I look forward to seeing what deck builders much smarter than me come up with. <laughs> and if it doesn't land, we're at the precipice of a, a standard season or a, a, a new, you know, season standard roll. Standard year. Standard year. Rotation. Thank you. We're, yeah, we're on the precipice of a rotation. Uh, a lot of the token stuff is going to be going bye-bye. So if token sticks and maybe Guff doesn't land, we've still got plenty of time with Wild Heart Guff here in hopefully a post-Token Druid meta. Yeah. I mean, we play this in any slower Druid deck because, I, Joss, you're 100% right. The first line is marketing, right? It reminds me of the of the Priest quest where, like, people read Destroy the Enemy here and they're like, whoa, that's crazy. And then it's like, oh, no, it's just kind of fine. Um this is shield block wild growth for five mana. The most important turns of every Hearthstone game are turns one through five. And when Slow Druid loses because it is way behind and turns one through five and then gets hit in the face a bunch of times, this doesn't change that. But it it gets you, it bridges you to the late game a little bit faster. You have a bunch of you have a hero powers of one mana wild growth, and then it, like you just you always play this in a slower Druid deck. I don't think that I would build my strategy around it unless I knew I was going to fatigue and have time. Because if you're saying I need to find my legendary that I can't tutor for, and then I also need to add extra mana afterwards, and then I need to do a thing, at that point you've basically already won if you're still alive. But I like the idea of this being a wild growth shield block of just giving you something to do in the middle of the game, getting you a little bit further towards your plan, giving you some armor, getting you a card, a little bit of everything. It's good. It's not crazy. It's not broken. It's going to be flashy. You're going to see it in a Trollden video. But it's a, it's a good card. <laughs> Well, let's move right along because we've seen like half of the Hunter cards already. So we're going to be in Hunter for a little bit here. And uh, we're going to start. Well, I'm just going to go in order of what's on the darn website. So let's talk about Bloodseeker, a two mana, two attack, two durability, common Hunter weapon with honorable kill, gain plus one, plus one. So if Bloodseeker deals exact lethal to whatever it kills, it gains plus one, plus one. So Bloodseeker could has the potential to go infinite. It could. <laughs> Especially as its attack is going to grow over the course of the game as other enemy minions start to get bigger and bigger. So this is going to continue to align with your opponent's minions potentially. Um, but yeah, the thing you're going to have to worry well, about until if you're they, doing that. <laughs> until they play Flag <laughs> Runner. Face. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah the the face is an interesting bit right like mm -hmm. but i mean even then if you're gaining durability if you send some to face it's not like it consumes all durability you still just lose one durability and then sure. maybe next turn you have some beautiful exact lethal play i'm looking up i'm looking forward to the follow-up keyword to honorable kill that's just called consolation prize where you get a bonus if you miss lethal by one leave enemy mm. minions alive with one health remaining <laughs> it's yeah. not overkill it's not honorable kill it's oh man i was so close kill <laughs> keyword bummer <laughs> it, keyword chat lethal <laughs> <laughs> i like it i like it yeah. we just i think we just um, workshopped a great card uh hire all three of us please <laughs> i like attempted it, murder <laughs> well done <laughs> wicked that's a pretty good one murder. <laughs> that is keyword excellent murder <laughs> yeah. i believe um, that's 25 to life so i believe like, that's the stats on on attempted murder <laughs> mm. so 
my game plan here is play it on turn two, kill an intrepid initiate or something, and then go face twice. And I basically have a two mana three three weapon, and that's good. That's I'll I'm cool with that. Well, it would, it's a good deal. It would be a three two weapon, right? Because it uses right, but you get the first swing for free. Right. You hit the one two, so then you you hit it. It goes down to a it goes to a three two because you lose one, then you gain plus one plus one, and then you go face twice. Yeah, so three two, not three three. Well, you get the first swing, and then it's you swing essentially the a three oh, three. Okay. Like, if, if, yeah, if you add up the full transaction, uh, you end up with three three. I worth see. Of stats. Okay. I yeah. See. Yes. Yeah. No, Blood Seeker is a great value free. proposition. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I think yes. in most realistic scenarios, Blood Seeker is one hundred and ten percent worth the man and the card mm -hmm. slot. Um, this is a really good card. Uh, next up is Dunball. Dun Dun I've never had to say this out loud. Dunbalder. Dunbalder Dun bunker. Yeah. Uh, two mana. <laughs> Rare hunter spell at the end of your turn. Draw a secret and set its cost to one. This lasts three turns because it is an objective, which we talked about at the very tip top of explaining Fractured and Alterac. What a weird hunter card. It kind of is. I mean, I'm I'm interested to see if like a secret hunter is the way to go. There's a couple of tools that are going on in this expansion, a couple of things that have already, you know, that are live and standard right now that could potentially come together into a secret hunter deck. I mean, this basically will pull a specific type of card out of your deck every turn, reduce its cost in half and do that a guaranteed three times um that seems pretty good <laughs> if you want to be playing a lot of secrets uh, do we want to play a lot of secrets i'm not sure <laughs> it remains to be seen but um yeah it, yeah it's it's a cool Wait, no it's, it's a secret what it no itself, hat it is an unknown it's a secret if we want to be playing a lot of secrets. Oh, I thought you were trying to tell me Dunbalder. Oh, wait, Joss, did you not get it? No. Like, no, it's an objective. What are you talking she about? Assumed, <laughs> she Joss assumed. Joss is doing a great impression of that lady. Joke that dumb. J Joss is doing a great impression of that lady that got clipped on Fox News that's been going around on Twitter today. Oh, my God. I yes. don't even know what that is. I had a really intense job interview this afternoon, you guys. My brain is fried. I'm trying so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I'm just not keeping up, and I should just go. <laughs> I, I don't know if this is something we want to do, but I think it's a cool design, and objectives in general, I think, are a cool design. Uh, they remind me of enchantments and magic, which is something I've been wanting to see in Hearthstone. Okay. <laughs> I like it. That's that's my assessment of Dunbalder. I, I don't like know, it. but I like it. <laughs> well, and they're clearly doing secret synergy cards if we look at Ram Tamer here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ram Tamer, three mana, four, three, common hunter minion, battle cry. If you control a secret, gain plus one, plus one, and stealth. The stealth is interesting. Um, we do also right now in standard have... I think it's called Petting Zoo, which is the spell that summons a 3-3 three, three and then repeats for every secret that you hold, that you currently control. And that doesn't see any play, but stealth on a 3-3, three, three, or sorry, stealth on a 3-mana minion that would become a 5-4, that's going to guarantee pretty much guaranteed to get a swing at that point in the game, right? There's not many things that can deal four damage to something that's stealth at that early on in a game. So probably good, uh, probably better than petting zoo. And maybe you throw petting zoo in with this again, if we're going down a, a secret hunter route. I would be very excited about having a five, four with stealth that I can play on three. So I am incentivized to, try a deck that wants to play this although it's gonna be although well i mean you could just straight up play a secret on two and then this on three for sure as long as your secret doesn't get triggered on your opponent's turn uh it's a little bit trickier and might happen a little bit later if you're trying to play dunbalder bunker on two instead and and get those cost reduced secrets then you know you're gonna have to wait till turn four to to pair this with ram tamer but or to pair the secret you draw with ram tamer but I, I, there may be something here. There's there's not, some support anyways. Yeah, it's not terrible off curve either. I mean, four health, mm. only only uh, 
few classes can deal with four health stealth via AOE abilities, right? Mm-hmm. Minefield, Bladestorm, it's Warrior. Mostly Warrior. <laughs> Get out of here, Warrior. We don't want you. <laughs> no, I'm finally playing it. <laughs> it's it's okay. You can try. <laughs> I think that, uh, I don't know, like it's a three mana five four stealth and a two mana draw three. When you look at them together, I'm assuming that there's a secret in this set. Because you don't print these two oh, cards yeah, without yeah. making a new secret. So I'm curious what it is. Because you can, Kobold's made Wandering Monster and then all of a sudden we wanted to play a secret on two. Uh, because it was Wandering Monster. We actually want a secret here that we're not going to trigger on two, but keeps us from falling behind. I, I'm i curious to see what they do. They're going to do something. You can do open the cages, but then like if they kill the Ram Tamer, you don't get a second minion. It's just like two mana discard a card to give a minion plus one plus one next turn. That's not good enough. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see what secret we get here. But both of these are reasonable value propositions. They're just also leaning into a slower hunter deck, and those haven't been great for a little while. Uh, and the legendary, or well, they're, the other cards that we see here, I'm I'm also not super convinced on uh, because they're also aiming for slower hunter strategies. But I would love to be wrong because I'm so excited whenever there are hunter decks that aren't facing the meta. Well, yeah, slower hunter strategy is something we've been asking for for a long time because face hunter has been the primary hunter deck in the meta for a long time. So it would be really nice to see them go a different direction. And it seems like there's a lot of cards in this set that are really trying to push the game into a slower, longer kind of space and do some really big and interesting things and give you the tools to actually get there against a lot of aggressive strategies. So I think we're going to have to see what's actually going on in the rest of the Hunter set. But uh, I think you're right, Hat. We're definitely getting a secret in this set for Hunter. Yeah, that seems extremely likely, right? But for now, it is an unknown quantity. Yes. All right, next card up is, uh, if I could have one spell in World of Warcraft, it would be this, Revive Pet. Three mana rare Hunter spell. It's a nature spell. Still not used to having to say spell types. But it reads, discover a friendly beast that died this game, summon it. This seems quite pricey, because this is going to be something you want to do late game, and you probably want to hit a significant beast that's worth five or more, right? Like, literally pulling numbers out of my butt. But I'm probably <laughs> not going to want to revive, like, a two-mana beast with a three-mana card, right? <laughs> So I'm going to want some beefy beasts to have been played and died. And then I want to play this card to, to get them back again. So, um, I mean, uh, more trampling rhinos is good and um, mm. fine paying three mana for it. That is true. I think revive pet is good. I'm actually, I'm my my gut reaction is I like this card a lot and I think it's going to be good. Hat. You can't have a slow hunter deck without cards like this. This is your nine lives equivalent. This is two lives, not nine lives, but like it summons any beast, not a death rattle beast. Your rhinos, your teacher's pets, your, your rat kings in some worlds. There are, again, there are dreams of big hunter decks out there. Dreams of crush. <laughs> right. It's, or like, or anything that costs more than five, because we just haven't been able to do that for a while. So I don't know. I... I like the idea that they're printing these cards and they clearly want this to work. And I'm hoping that they have buffs in store if they don't work because the, they've given so many half-hearted pieces to Death Rattle Hunter and Beast Hunter over the year. I want them to give it a little shove because late game strategies can be so good right now because they don't matter half the time because you don't get to the late game. With the amount of power they put in early game, you'll see that in the era cards we see, especially in the Paladin section. You can make your late game cards late game cards crazy because people aren't going to see them half the time i hope they make late game hunter good and this card will be a part of it because there will be five or six mana beasts that you could play and then you'll get them back and they'll be really powerful when they do i would like to see that happen i agreed i have nothing to add yeah yeah it's good assessment um all right let's see let's wrap it up with a uh, hunter legendary not the hero card though wing commander is it Ickman or Eichmann? Ickman, I um, think. <laughs> yeah, Itchman is just fun to say. Anyway, uh, Wing Commander is a 9-mana 5-4 legendary hunter minion with battle cry that reads... No, that's Manich. Manich is wrong. <laughs> Manich? 
Nothing. No, Keep going. No, I'm missing the joke. Uh, the battle I'm cry. I'm not acknowledging this in the show. I took a shower today. It's fine. <laughs> Yo, you can read it now, Hat. You can read it. It's, it's so Wing Commander Ikman. <laughs> battle cry. Nine mana, five four hunter legendary battle cry. Summon a beast to your deck and give it rush. If it kills a minion this turn, repeat. It's not quite Katharina. It's not quite Flark's Boom Zooka. I don't know what to make of this. This is the first nine mana card we have seen in expansion this entire standard year. The first one. Every other set has stopped at eight. Isn't that insane? And it's in Hunter. Was it, it is. When did we get... Oh, was Dragon Queen Alex Straza last Core. year? Oh, core. Okay. Yeah. Right. Core. And Fair. also, it just replaced a nine mana card with a newer, better nine mana card, which I'm glad they did. Uh, but in expansion sets, Barons and Stormwind, both base and mini, had nothing that cost more than eight. Is this good enough to play at nine? <laughs> or Absolutely is it, not. Okay. No. I was like, or is this just going to get run over it's... by all of the better cards that cost eight or less? <laughs> okay. The guy on the guy riding, uh, the wing commander himself. He looks like Regis Kilbin, and this is a Regis Kilbin kind card, and there will be so many amazing videos made about this, and this is why I nerfed Quest Mage, so you can make a video about this and not die to fireballs, right? Like, that's why this is here. But this is a card that's not aimed at the competitive segment. I imagine it will be popular. I imagine people will try stuff with it. What it's trying to do is making a lot of really big assumptions about the game state, that you can put a bunch of beasts in your hunter deck, that you'll make it to turn nine, that your opponent will have minions, you'll be able to kill them with those beasts, and then your board afterwards will matter. I don't think that's how games of Hearthstone go right now, but I hope they do because that situation sounds really fun, but also just not something that's likely to be competitive. Well, I feel bad for GIF Commander Giffman. Are you instigating? He is. <laughs> that yes. The commander here is a bad card. Not at all. Not at all. Ah. <sighs> Let's talk about you, let's talk about one mage card. Siphon mana. Two mana common arcane spell that reads deal two damage, honorable kill. Reduce the cost of spells in your hand by one. Cause we're all sitting here thinking, you know what I miss? Mages getting spell discounts. Yeah. <laughs> I miss it so much. I was really wondering when we'd continue seeing it nonstop. And you know that two health minions are going to be around, <laughs> especially in the early game. Mm-hmm. <sighs> mm-hmm. Or yeah. three health minions that you hero power you can ping and, and yeah. then you mm-hmm. siphon mana it. I don't know. Hat, it sounds like we're both really <laughs> down on this card. Are, can you, can you tell us why this is, this is a, this is fine. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that Mage has the survivability tools or the way to end games anymore after the nerf to Sorcerer's Gambit, and I don't care. This is spooky, and I don't like it. Um, <laughs> cool. I, All right. We're in I, agreement. I, okay. So, yeah, we agree. Just boo, well, siphon mana, boo. <laughs> it, hold, as, well, okay. All right. Here's I the subtext that of that, next though. Year, Wait, next year, after rotation, right? Yeah, what I, leaving. what I was going to say is when we here on the Anger Chicken look at a card and in unison go, boo, the hidden text is, this is probably going to be good. That's the hidden text. Well, but we do think that it's good. That's the problem. Well, that's what I just want to be clear. <laughs> yeah. Like we go, we go boo because we're afraid be of it. I don't think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be annoying. I'm not going to like losing to this. I don't think that mage is good enough. I don't think this will make mage good enough. It's good at the things that mage is already good at, and I don't think that mage is good at all that much after the nerf. I think that people should dust their sorcerer's gambits, but I'm going to lose to this card because someone won't, and because they discounted a bunch of crap that I don't like dealing with, and I'm going to be annoyed. But I don't think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be annoying. <laughs> it's very, very specific. <laughs> and I'm Flavor text, you will be annoyed. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I'm sure all nuance will be lost by the hat haters out there. Uh, <laughs> Paladin is up next, starting with Dunbalder Bridge. I got knocked off this. Name of the, is this the same name as the last bridge? No, that was a bunker. That, that was, was a Dunbalder bunker, bunker yeah. of which there are multiple bunkers at Dunbalder. There is not a Dunbalder Bunker, Dunbalder Bunker, Dunbalder Bunker. Ah, shit. Dunbalder Bridge. 
Dumbalder Bridge, Dumbalder Bridge, Dumbalder Bridge, Dumbalder Bridge. That one's easier than Bunker. <laughs> it's the extra syllable on Bunker. That'll that'll get you. That'll get you. Anyway, Dunbalder Bridge is a four mana rare paladin spell that reads after you summon a minion, give it plus two, plus two. And guess what? It lasts three turns. The bridge was definitely an objective. <laughs> Indeed, it was. Um, this I, All I think of is college. We would run AVs all day. All day, and I played Alliance at the time. I hadn't done my horde swap yet. And I would just sit on this bridge, at the back of the bridge with my hunter, and just plink people for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. <laughs> So what do we think of the actual card? So a four mana card giving everything plus two plus two for three turns after you play it. And I'm assuming objectives aren't stackable. Like I'm assuming that they're like secret. So if I have Dunbalder Bridge up, then I can't oh, play it again question. on the next turn. I hadn't considered that. I think you could play both. I mean, like, I, I'm I imagining would think that these so... work like slots on the board that go away. I would think so too, because that would be so slow. And so probably bad that you should at least get the benefit of having overcommitted before you die and watching a 4-4 buff go off. <laughs> but so wait, so Joss, do you think that you can't play the second one until the first one is done, Baldur yeah. Bridge? That would that would be my that would be my interpretation, just because I'm thinking of these like quests and secrets. Where, you know, you can't play the same one twice. Like, for instance, the side quest that we got where, like, you summon all the leper gnomes. Like, you had that one side quest till it was done, and then you could play another one, but you had to complete it first. So I'm just wondering if you have to complete an objective before you can play another one. So we're being reminded by one Celestalon in chat um, that uh, Darkmoon Fair is still in standard, and there is a three-minute card called Day at the Fair, which summons three one ones. which, if you corrupt it, by playing a card that costs more, like this card, uh, that it summons five one ones, and they all get buffed. So I think the idea here is that if you go Dun Balder Bridge, and then the next turn you play Day at the Fair, and you summon three or five three threes, that's a bunch of stuff. That's true. I keep thinking of this as in um, like three minions that you summon not a persistent effect that lasts over the turn that if you summon a whole bunch of small stuff, it's not going to be small anymore. So you can get this buff on five. And if they manage to clear those five minions, then you can play the same card the next turn and get another five and you'd all of them get that plus two plus two buff. So I was kind of thinking of it incorrectly and uh, yeah, combined with some of the, the token summoning things that Paladin can do, uh, this is, this I mean, is hell, a little bit uh, more interesting. If we're still looking at Dark Moon, I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a perfect curve, but uh, mm -hmm. turn four, Dunbalder Bridge, turn five, seven, seven, Lothraxian, uh, turn six, uh, day at the fair and get a bunch of dudes with now Divine Shield plus buff. Like there's all kinds of that's a lot of bubble boys. Fun, yes, mm. that is a that 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 is a <laughs> bunch of bubble boys. Writing down episode title. <laughs> we have so many episode titles at this. We point. do <laughs> good show so far. Um, and you could do like you could do Barker first. So you could have a Barker bunch of bubble boys, and then like oh, you know. <laughs> But wait, into they a wouldn't bunch be of one health boys. They wouldn't Say be, that five times fast. But but Barker, they wouldn't be one health minions anymore after Dunbalder Bridge. Uh, well, the, it's I, it's an after effect. Oh, it, oh, it's it is after. after. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Oh, oh, I mean that's a dream, right? That is 100 so percent magical still, Christmas so land. Your bridge would still buff your bunch of bubble boys after the Barker gave them more, you, you know, buffs. <laughs> but you got a Barker before you bridge your bubble boys. This is getting very tongue twistery. <laughs> Alliteration. How does it work? Oh, <laughs> I like that. That's a good. That, that's a good sound effect. Um, how do you not do voice acting, Jocelyn? Um, yeah, I, I. I. This is. This is very much like our secret talk with with Hunter. Like, I. I don't know if this is good, but I really, really want it to be, because this is like one hundred and ten percent the kind of shit I love doing in paladin i love i love dude paladin i want dude paladin to be a thing i really want dude paladin to be a thing without librams 
would be nice. I'm, I'm so bored with Librams. I'm so done with yeah, them. I know I was really yeah. excited about them, and it is. It's going to go down in history as one of my favorite archetypes ever. Um, but I'm, I'm done. I am done with Librams. Ready to close the book on them? <laughs> I'm about to throw the book at you. <laughs> Come at me. Do we have like a book of podcast rules or something with a, <laughs> a pun threshold for every episode? <laughs> we are freaking past it at this point. Let's, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, I'm really excited about the potential of, of this card a lot. This this is, if I got to make a card, it would probably look something like this. So, uh, I'm not, what is this ordering? I, I think it's mana cost. I'm going to rare before we go to the legendary. Templar Captain is an 8 mana, 8-8, eight, eight, rare paladin minion with rush. And it reads, after this attacks a minion, summon a 5-5 five, five defender with taunt. I love it. Also, I love the pose of this dude just pointing. Um, yeah, it sure seems like you're going to get a 5-5 five, five defender with taunt because that's how rush works. <laughs> Yeah, and it's after it attacks a minion, right? So, I mean, this thing could just keep pinging off minions and giving you more 5-5 five, five defenders. In theory, right? I mean, it's coming down theory, Lariat, it's yep. 8 mana, um, but you're all, but uh, uh, Leverms are still here, Paladins are still buffing their minions, so it's it could be bigger than 8-8, eight, eight. it could be quite difficult to deal with. Again, coming down late in the game, though, so your opponent's going to have most of the tools that they could ever want at their disposal at that point. Um, to to deal with this, but if can you read the flavor text real quick? Can oh, just, okay. just wow! We don't usually thing. do this. You can combine two of these into a Captain Archon. Oh, <laughs> I just ascended. I enjoyed that. Um, also, this is eight mana. Deal eight to a min. Make thirteen something in stats. That's a. There are a lot of numbers going on here. Librum of Hope rotates with ashes. Uh, we're gonna see this card. This is if Paladin gets past turn five, we're gonna see this. The deal here is crazy. There's a lot of this talk is about Illidari Inquisitor level. Yeah, there's a lot been a lot of talk about big booties on this episode, and this one is booty 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 rocking everywhere. <laughs> but like you don't need to work for you don't need to work for this. You just play it on turn eight, you hit their thing, and you make two giant bodies, including a taunt. It develops, it removes, it defends, it does everything you want a card to do. There's no deck building restriction. You just have to make it to turn eight, and it does stuff. The, we yeah, will see the, this card. What's the worst case scenario? They don't have a minion? Oh, no. I developed an 8-8, eight, eight and they have nothing on board. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love this card. It's a good card. Let's talk about another hero card, because we got to see Paladins, which is Light Forged Cariel. Seven manas, uh, five armor. Did I just say manas? Battle cry, deal two damage to all enemies. Equip a two-five immovable object. I, did, I haven't seen the... Oh, oh, I was expecting okay, better yeah. art. This is a crazy one. I haven't seen this yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right. So a movable object, that the one that you equip. Um, you it, equip. It, you don't have to pay for this. It says yes. seven mana, you, but you just yes. equip it. You just equip it. <laughs> Um, it has text on it that reads, this doesn't lose durability. Your hero takes half damage rounded up. I love that they included rounded up in the text here. This is great. Um, yeah, that seems... Doesn't lose durability. <laughs> she just gets this. Yeah. Uh, Period. Yep. Uh, <laughs> hey, um, if this was mad money, we'd be yelling uh, bye, bye, bye on ooze. Ooze stock just <laughs> went way up. No, no, no. Sell ooze. Buy Viper. Okay, my vipers. bad. Okay, gotta, my, my bad. It's, my bad. You got to make good trades. You're right. You're, you're absolutely right. And we haven't even talked about the hero power you get, which is called Blessing of Queens, which is so good <laughs> in <Yes>. flavor. <laughs> uh, hero power, give a random minion in your hand, plus four, plus four. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I am, I'm biased. I think this is strictly superior to Blessing of Brooklyn. Strictly superior. <laughs> I uh, I just want blessing of Lower East Side, please. Mm, I, work I don't there. know <laughs> enough about uh, New it. York it gives it kidding. gives you punk rock and good cocktails. <laughs> but yeah, uh, these hero cards so far, and we've only seen two of them, but they seem pretty shenanigans. <laughs> it's so the so the first of all. Wow, players in the room. This is Prot Valley. 
Because you're supposed to face tank with this 2-5 and take less damage and then buff your friends. This is prop pally. That's what it is. You deal the AoE. Prop pally's buff their friends? The board. I, I don't know. I don't play well. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that they take less damage and hit things. Like, that's a thing that happens, right? Yes? Y yes. Well, okay. I mean, if they're uh, a tank, they should be taking the most damage and hitting things. Yes. <laughs> Right, exactly. So the what I like about this card is this is the design that should tell you exactly what they're trying to do. Again, the most valuable turns are turns one through five. If you get to the late game against a Paladin, if they have Librum of Hope, you're already losing. This is not like strictly better than Librum of Hope, but that's rotating out soon. But also the idea of when you get to the late game, to make these kind of cards relevant, you can crank up the numbers and the text pretty hard. But if an aggressive deck gets under this, you're still dying. And the late game combo we decks that can deal a billion damage if you're getting 120 by lifesteal DH, you take 60 instead, you're still dead. But the text here looks crazy, and it gives you a really clear idea of what you're doing here, of you're buffing your hand, making a big Mr. Smite or whatever, you're killing stuff when you play it, and you're face tanking stuff whenever you want, and also dying. Like, you're not dying because you're taking half damage. I really like the idea here, and it looks completely insane as a card. If you sent this back in time, people like, the power creep is crazy. But I don't actually think this is that insane. Because it's you're dependent on getting to the late game and then doing something after this. Slowing the game down doesn't make you win. This is not enough to win the game by itself. A lot of what we're looking at today does, and this happens, I feel like, every other set, look like a slower meta. But we're, we've all been alive a very long time, I believe, is what we've come around come to a conclusion on uh, earlier in the show. Um, and it, even if it doesn't matter how slow a meta looks, it's not always the case. Like that meta does not always come. It does not always become a reality. Um, I think in, if we find ourselves in a slower hearthstone post this expansion, then I think this card's amazing. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be amazing post rotation. We're going to play this in any Paladin deck that goes past turn six. Like, it's a thing that you play. I don't think it's going to be format breaking, may not even be format defining, but it's a good card. And when you get in the late game, you you want to do cool stuff. So make it worth it. Because they've been pushing low-cost stuff for years now, since, uh, since Ashes, really. It's time to push the big stuff. Let's do it. Because when they printed Old Gods, and they were all 10 mana, and they were all kind of underwhelming, everyone was kind of bummed. So let's make the Mercenaries who are awesome characters that they've really worked hard to develop. And I'm going to give a special shout-out here to Matt London, who's done a great job with the narrative and great job with the Book of Mercenaries. These characters now feel like a real part of Hearthstone. They're all getting hero cards. Let's make them good. Why not? It, they can pull them back if they need to, but let's make them good. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had a joke with certain surveys that went out. I think a, a reasonable concern of a large amount of the player base has been that they want to do cool things late in the game. That's been a concern, especially post-quests. Yeah. And so far... There's some really cool things to do late in the game in this set, and we have barely scratched the surface of this entire set. Here's hoping we get to do those cool. We get to go late game. That's. I just want to. I just want to point one thing out that happened in the chat room because I don't want us to to miss this. But um, uh, Blood Rose in the chat room asked if it doesn't lose durability, why give it five durability? To which one Celestalon replied, you'll see, wink, wink, stay tuned. So looks like we might be getting some sort of interaction with weapon durability that maybe we're not used to. Originally, there I was thought... Blood there was Bloodsair Corsair? Yes, yeah, that Can't was my durability. original thought, is that... Oh, right. Yeah. Is, I thought that maybe it was like do some oh, at a you're time, right. but yeah, it can't lose. I was thinking you couldn't lose durability from attacking, but yeah, if it can't lose durability, it can't lose durability. It needs to be straight up destroyed, right? So uh, it sounds to me like there's going to be some interaction between cards coming in the expansion and weapon durability. So Harrison Jones reprint? Probably <laughs> not. It's been Probably so long not. since we've done something like that, right? He's the only card I can remember. Right, because it destroys the card, and then there's an effect based uh, on the car on the weapon's durability. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it's yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, cute. So this is very cute. Very interesting. Yeah, I don't want to call Carol cute. She looks angry. <laughs> oh yeah, she's a badass bitch. <laughs> That's what she is. Oh yeah, yeah she, I, was, exactly. I wasn't calling Carol cute. I was just. 
the, no, the you design. Were. The design. Just making sure that that car- that she didn't misunderstand. She's got a big hammer. <laughs> she will come for you. <laughs> she. It's. I respect her. Carol's dope as hell, and I think it's had consistently some of the best art across all of the mercenaries. Like even in yeah. like also, base ass armor, Carol has looked cool as hell. And Book of Carol was really good. Was really really good. Heavy, but very good. Maybe I'll try it. I don't do the single player. The rogue. Let's talk about <laughs> rogue snowfall graveyard. Definitely have died and rest here before. <clears throat> Sorry, rest here, then died, then rest here again because I was getting camped. All right. Snowfall <laughs> graveyard is a three mana rare rogue spell that reads your death rattles trigger twice and it is objective. So it lasts three turns. So Death Rattle Rogue, historically, has been one of two things. A meme or a Necrium Apothecary. <laughs> I would love to explore a third option, but Necrium Apothecary, for those who don't remember, is in DoD. And it was a four mana two five combo, draw a death rattle and gain a death rattle, and it did some it didn't do okay things. It did unokay things. They were not okay. So I'm hoping that we find a way for this to be cool and interesting and not a meme, but also not Necrium Apothecary. And this is the only rogue card we've seen. I'm curious. Uh, I'm skeptical because as a person that has played a lot of rogue, every single time they have printed a slower rogue archetype, I have been excited and been disappointed. All the way back to Shadowcaster and Whispers of the Old Gods. It didn't work. Uh, that's just, it's rogue just doesn't do this sort of thing. I hope they figure it out this time. Uh, but Powerful text. We know from playing Baron Rivendare in, in Battlegrounds, powerful text. I'm not okay, I promise. Nothing. Snowed in. We're moving I right into Warrior. <laughs> Someone will. Um, all right. Only run rogue card's been revealed so far. Only one warrior card's been revealed so far, and it is called Snowed In. Three mana, epic warrior frost spell. Destroy a damaged minion, freeze all other minions. We're getting a freeze effect in our warrior. What the Reese's loving hell is happening here? Yeah, and all other minions. So like a lot of warrior cards, this is going to hit your stuff too. (laughs) Careful when you get snowed in. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's basically a freezing whirlwind effect. You're right. Boy, warriors (laughs) really need to calm down because they're causing too much collateral damage. I mean, like, it's great if you destroy something when you've got nothing on board and then you play your stuff. Like, I mean, it's a great effect. You can, you know, pause your opponent's turn. Everybody hates it when Mage does that. So, like, it's it's a good effect. It's cheap. <laughs> and you get to, to do two things that are going to help you live longer, destroy their biggest threat, and then also freeze everything else they got going on. Um, you just have to be playing one of those control archetypes we've been talking about so much. And uh, yeah, maybe not necessarily focusing on tempo plays of minions onto your board to to take the best advantage of this that you can. It's cool, though. It's super cool. Oh, yes. Yeah, Frost it? card. Get it? Yes. It- <laughs> Jocelyn, that was a nice joke. <laughs> Thanks, Hat. We need to let it go. <laughs> My hair's not long enough to braid anymore. Oh. <laughs> so sad. The amount of pop culture references fit in the last 30 seconds would confuse a time traveler. <laughs> <laughs> not if they're from the future, because they would still be relevant, probably. Maybe. <laughs> Disney doesn't update their rides very often. That's what I'm trying to say. Even I'm sure the, the new Avatar movies isn't... would be out by then. <laughs> well, I'm not, I don't think they will. <laughs> I don't think they will, Hat. It depends uh, how far in the future they are. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, this it's an interesting card. I, I have historically liked Whirlwind Effects. It is like such a key defining trait of Warrior, and this is a pretty unique one. So see what happens. These the undead in the art look very like mildly inconvenienced. <laughs> I I do think like it's a good rate and again if you're looking to slow the game down you make a card like this I'm 
I think this is the kind of control tool that you can print to make it very clear, like, hey, let's you progress a, a wide board, you keep your opponent from playing more minions because their board is full if they play that much early into a Rancor turn or into a coin brawl or whatever. Uh, I This is the kind of card you make if you really want game to get a little bit slower, uh, and it's not too hard to meet the damage minion um, condition. It certainly it is a, a major emergency break, for sure. Uh, so... Anxious to yeah, see so if you what the rest of the minion to target, like. you can't play it at all. Like that's important. Yeah, mm-hmm. the, we've seen enough. We've seen a decent amount of cards have you know have been revealed already since the announcement just a day ago. Um, but but I can't help but wonder. I'm like, does it does it seem like we're going for a, a, a slower meta, or are they just like intentionally holding back all of the murder you dead aggro cards for like the latter half of reveals? Time will tell. Yeah, maybe there aren't any murder you dead aggro cards. There's enough mm. murder you dead aggro cards out there. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Uh, any neutrals that we didn't already cover that we really want to talk about? Uh, just for me, at least the abominable lieutenant that came out today, the uh, eight mana three five with the flavor text that says at the end of your turn, eat a random enemy minion and gain its stats. So a persistent effect that's going to happen once at the end of every turn. And so this thing's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And traditionally in Hearthstone, things that have worked like this haven't necessarily seen a lot of competitive play. But I think he's cool. And I hope we see this see some play. <laughs> I think he's cool too. Uh, this reminds me of like the, the end of turn demon buffing out of Battlegrounds. Uh, more than anything else, uh, also my favorite art so far. This thing is just rad looking. This is like it's some really old cool. school, yeah. gross <laughs> Warcraft undead stuff going on here. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I was. Yeah. Can we? We're gonna. You know, it's in chat. It's public. Uh, one Celestalon is in chat. Going. I'm just gonna read this verbatim. We are going for a slower meta. Hooray! Make a. Th- let's hold on. This is gonna be the YouTube thumbnail. Blizzard confirms. Hearthstone <laughs> will have a slower meta. No, it's it, the thumbnail is Blizzard hates aggro. Mm. Oh, well done. That is definitely it. Yes, yes. And then I'm going to grab yeah. a picture of Celeste in line, and then he will never come on the show again. <laughs> yeah, don't get him yeah. in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> never. But so, like, I so, okay, I want you to envision, say you're a Libram Paladin and you play Librum of Hope, and they play this, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> your thing is dead, and this in 11 uh, I sit there, a, a tear leaves my eye, and I go, I know I said I was bored with Librum, but not like this. Not like this. <laughs> exactly <Yeah>. like this. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's, this is, again, it's the kind of thing where, like, you can't really develop minions against this, so if you don't have reach from hand, this is a non-taunt, non-heal card that actually builds a board for you over time and makes incremental development from your opponent irrelevant. I think this is a really interesting and cool design, and the ways to deal with this are not the ways that you normally deal with more controlling strategies. This, the turn you play it, it does something. Every turn thereafter, it mitigates your opponent's development, and burn from hand is still a way around this. There's no control decks that's going to play that's going to be invincible, right? Because you can still do from hand stuff, which is why from hand stuff is important. But in turn, if the board ends up mattering and you get to this point, then this card is powerful. So yeah, I think this is the good kind of card to push. Yeah, I like this one a lot. When I saw it yeah. come up before the show, I was like, oh, we have to mention this thing. This is awesome. <laughs> it is very cool. Uh, the only other two thing car- cards we haven't talked about, so might as well mention, don't really have much to say. I think they're just good examples of Honorable Kill is Gnome Private, a one mana, one three common neutral with Honorable Kill game plus two attack, and Knight Captain, uh, five mana, three, three, battle cry, deal three damage, Honorable Kill gain plus three, plus three. Anything to add? Honorable other... kill, not really. I mean, honorable kill is is an interesting keyword, I think. And these effects seem fairly powerful. Like if you play Night Captain and you're able to get the honorable kill, then you've killed something with your battle cry. And also now you've got a 6-6. So that seems pretty good. 
pretty pretty swingy and good for five mana. I'm probably not good enough to kick a whole bunch of class cards out of uh, decks, but we'll have to see. I just think honorable kill as a keyword, it's really interesting. So I look forward to seeing, especially um, GMs and, and other competitor, com competitive players in the Masters Tour, um, if this ends up being a, a competitive keyword that we see used a lot. So the last time we saw a keyword that ended in kill, it was overkill, right? And that was in Rastakhan's Rumble, uh, and different time in the game's history, not here to marinate on it, but overkill was... It rewarded you for being inefficient on more expensive cards. And more expensive and inefficient are things that you naturally don't want to do in Hearthstone. Honorable Kill generally seems to be aimed towards lower cost cards, and it wants to reward you for doing the things you already want to do, which is precise value trades and efficiency. And then it says, if you do that, you get this payoff. Night Captain is an interesting design because it's a more expensive card. Five mana is like, it's right at the midpoint of the game, and it has the opportunity to really work out for you, or they don't have a three health minion. And maybe you go face with it and it's okay, but not great. Or maybe you kill a minion exactly for damage, like for exact lethal, and it's fantastic. Maybe you kill a two health minion and it's okay again. Like it's fine, but you're not thrilled about it. There's some dynamic replayability there, which I really, really like. Uh, but it's not just a mechanic that's only on hyper-efficient cards that we see, like maybe Gnome Private, or I think the example we'd use is Siphon Mana. They have flexibility to use it, and it gets worse as the game goes on. Early game, it's really powerful, but it's still rewarded for doing what Hearthstone wants you to do. And I think that's a good way to go. I, I uh, yeah, I forgot Overkill was Rastakhan's Rumble, and um... <laughs> how could you? I should have remembered. I was like, oh yeah, that didn't work very well. <laughs> Must be from Rastakhan's. <laughs> just gonna drag it. Just, just drag it. Drag a troll lightly. And 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 move on. So that that's a that's a really good assessment. Hat like comparing it to Overkill. Like when you look at it that way, yeah, it seems infinitely better. So we'll uh, we'll see. It's what Hearthstone's it... about, and Overkill was about what they wished it was about, and it didn't work out. That's, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what else is fair? Battlegrounds. Let's talk about it because I got a big update with today's patch, and eventually I'd like to sleep. So let's go. Battle, friend. We got an official Hearthstone Battlegrounds tier list from the team, uh, also known as they gave armor to some heroes, and the amount of armor is directly correlated with how how bad they think the hero is. Um, so let's see. Uh, this is official. This is definitely how they wanted us to interpret it, but the heroes that, the, that Blizzard thinks are the absolute worst garbage dog turds in the game are AFK... Uh, crap, I'm forgetting names. <laughs> Guff. Uh, that's Arana and Guff. Uh, Arana, and Lich, Guff, Lich, Queen. Basiel, and yeah, Pyramid. And, uh, and Pyramid, yep. You Pyramid, bro? <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel so sad that AFK is down there at the very bottom. <laughs> yeah, she's not been doing well. Um, no, not oh, at all. Yeah, I, I recognize, I just, that makes me sad because, I mean, there, there was a time... When she was the pick, so well they How? did nerf her, but yeah, they, they, they have to her, yeah. yeah, they have to make sure that AFK is good in Alterac Valley. So like, I get it. <laughs> on point, on uh, that's an on point WoW joke. Well done, well done. Um, yeah, this is this I is play a lot of WoW. So <laughs> weird. I I really struggling to like wrap my head around how good or bad this is. Uh, like it kind of changes, kind of flips the script a bit for for battlegrounds. Um, by buying extra time for some of these, these these not as optimal heroes, um, and just so much of it comes down to like if I if I was to try and sit down and and analyze this, it's it's like I, the mileage I think really varies on giving armor, and I know that there's more armor being given to certain heroes than others. But like I don't like I do truly believe that there are some heroes that will just always be bad because their hero powers just are utterly crap at this point. Um, but there are definitely those, and where this is going to be the most impactful, there are definitely those heroes where it's not that their hero is bad, a hero power is bad, it's that it comes online or gains value so late into the game that they can't survive to take advantage of it. 
Um, you know, looking at things like like Bigglesworth, for example, and you know, I haven't even really, I haven't looked scrutinized this too much. Did they give armor to? Yes, they did to Reno. Reno's a good example. We're like, you can get early game value out of Reno's hero power if you really want, but it certainly is worth a lot more later into the game. Yeah, I think that this is an interesting way for them to attempt to balance out some heroes without actually having to change fundamental things about the way that they work and just kind of giving them another turn or two to figure things out and and kind of get the use out of their hero power. So this gives them like another thing to tweak without having to necessarily mess around with like stats that hero powers give or costs of hero powers. And, you know, a lot of the things that we've seen them try to balance in the past have been very granular, as is always a problem in balance in Hearthstone, because we can't make those little, you know, like three to 5% tweaks you can make in MOBAs and, and in MMOs and stuff. So this just gives them one other thing that they're able to do in order to help to balance the mode and help to balance out heroes. So um, I'm kind of interested to know how often we might see these shift and, and you know, how they'll make that determination and when it's time. But um, I think that this is an interesting kind of first iteration of uh, the idea of armor. I, I like this. I think it's it's kind of cool. And it's going to make um, hero selection a little bit more interesting because, I mean... <laughs> Like, I'm going to see some that maybe have no armor, and I'm like, ooh, that's the better hero, but this one has more health now, so maybe that's actually the better hero. Maybe I should take AFK. I'm not going to know what to do for the first couple weeks. <laughs> yeah, I, I've only played a few games post-patch, um, and the only thing of any <laughs> definitive knowledge I have gained is that Flurgirl's still really good when you get Bran and uh, uh, Seffen. So... <laughs> Um, I have nothing new to, I, uh, yeah, I have not tested this enough. Um, hey everybody, we rec- we here at the Angry Chicken recommend Slissa for all of your Battlegrounds knowledge <laughs> needs. 100%. <laughs> yeah, but th- this is a big one. Uh, Slissa on chat room saying it's a fine tuning knob adding the armor and I, th- th- mm. that's definitely where my brain goes. Um, so often when we talk about Hearthstone Balance, we talk about the fact that it is not like a game like Overwatch or Heroes of the Storm where you can fine tune numbers and you can have decimals and fractions. That's not something that exists in, in Hearthstone. We, we deal in, in whole round numbers here. So um, adding armor does event, definitely give them a, a knob that they can fine tune. Mm-hmm. So. so I have not played Battleground since merch released. And it's not because I don't like the modes because I, I lack time. Um, but what I like about this from a game design perspective, I'm going to tell a slight, a slight tangent. There's a game that I really like. It's called Hades. All right. I've <laughs> talked about it on, on some podcasts before. Um, and the the game designer has gone on interviews and said one of the things that he really loves about where they landed with the game is that the game's been out in, in, for three years now. And players that have been playing the whole time, when they get to a discover equivalent screen, they have three choices. They still pause and think about it because there are choices to be made. And that's what I love that he did here, that there are some heroes that you would they didn't exist. They would be a blank spot. If they popped up, you would just never choose them. And now there's a choice. So this is, it's, it's a way to introduce diversity into the game and give that little added benefit by just adding a number of like, how much are you willing to gain in exchange for playing a hero that's made less objectively powerful? They'll, they'll tune this, they'll tweak this, they'll move it around, but just the mechanic itself reward you for picking a hero that maybe you haven't tried before and that's also how you get players to experiment with the game a little more and maybe there's something that they missed because they were operating an older knowledge in a newer meta uh, i think it's a it's a great addition yeah I, like my personal take is that i'm really excited for two of my favorite heroes which is tess and bigglesworth because they're l- significantly lower on the scale so they're getting more armor like love playing those heroes and they are such a wild bet it's just like, I'm going to take this and hope I don't get steamrolled. And now I have a little bit more armor to protect me uh, or aid in my hope for no steamrolling. Alex Strauss is in that same tier as well, Garrett. I don't know if you noticed. She mm. should be lower, much lower, because she's like the worst <laughs> hero in the game. So I don't know what numbers they're looking at. They must be looking at yours and literally everyone who has ever done well with them, because I've heard from everyone who's ever done well with Alex Straza because they all tweet me. <laughs> 
I even I've gotten two from people who are like, I want with you, Sarah Garrett, eat it. And I'm like, I love you, Sarah. What are you talking about? <laughs> they just got their dragons confused, okay? <laughs> I was yeah, gonna say Sarah, Alex Straza is the, Sarah's is, one of the ones that gets no armor, right? Isn't was, she? Uh, 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 they're they're sexy dragon ladies. They neither of them have armor. <laughs> Oh, it's so true. <laughs> I almost said, no, Alex Strauss is the sexy one. And then I realized, no, wait, Ysera also has an armor bikini. I just, yeah. <laughs> I'm more used to seeing Ysera as a dragon, I guess. Than yeah, Alex, Alex. Straza is in her, in her elven form quite often. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ysera really mm. went like full dragon for most of modern Warcraft. Mm-hmm. Um, and but then, we should talk yeah. about the new hero that's coming because we're already pushing um, two hours. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Tamsin Rome is the new hero. Hero power is fra- fragrant phylactery. I don't want to smell a phylactery. I don't care how fragrant it might be. I do want Tamsin's conditioner, though, because Tamsin's hair in the art for Battlegrounds is looking mighty fine. Uh, anyways, uh, the hero power costs no gold to use and is a start of combat hero power, where at the start of combat, you destroy your lowest health minion and give its health to all your others. This and, is a thinker. So this start is not of- a permanent destruction. Doesn't, doesn't leave your board. It gets destroyed at start of combat. Okay, yes. that was going to be my question. Is it, is it permanently destroyed so you don't get the gold for it, but is the health buff permanent? Because then that's an interesting decision. <laughs> but if it's just like start of combat for combat and then everything goes back to normal, then... That yeah, is that's... my understanding of how it works, yes. That would be nuts if you could just keep stacking health like that. Yeah. <laughs> But at the cost of not having that minion anymore and not getting the gold for selling it. To be just early on, this is really sp- spicy with minion of Azoth. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause then you get the death rattle plus an additional two health on all of your minions. If minion of Azoth isn't buffed for your trouble. Mm-hmm. Providing of course that it is your it, lowest health minion early game. You probably have some tokens you need to manage that. This is really good in Scallywag Cadgar, uh, uh, Eliza, right? Like, really good? Scallywag. Like, you instantly oh, trigger your Scallywag? Yes, yes. Like, instantaneously trigger it, and then you Which have the Which is ironic, face, because Scallywag it. just got more attack, but yes. But, it, yeah. Like, you instantly trigger a Death Rattle, regardless of combat. I think that's what they're going for here. That, if you have a 1-7 Baron, if you have a something smaller than 7 that you want to die first, your opponent cannot stop that from happening anymore. Yeah, Celestan's bringing up uh, Goldrin, which like late game beasts, uh, typically you want your Goldrin to be lowest health anyway, and it's one of the later beasts you find, so as long as you have a Mama Bear on board, it should stay the lowest health in your in your war band if you're playing correctly and you have control over that. So yeah, there's, 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 some, there's some spicy things you could do with this. It's definitely but interesting. Also, this is the kind of hero that I feel like I need to watch someone like Slissa play <laughs> many, many, many times before I actually understand how to play it properly. <laughs> I think this is the sort of hero where there will eventually be board states that we're very used to seeing. Like you're yes, going to learn like, yeah. oh, with, with beasts, th- this works well with Tamsin. With pirates, this works well with Tamsin. You're going to know like what the power, what the puzzle pieces are that you need for this hero exciting hero i like it i like tamsin mm-hmm. this is cool i want to i want to play her i've only played a few battlegrounds games post uh post patch and i have not seen tamsin uh, offered to me yet so yeah um other than that i'm not going to go point by point but we got quite a few other updates diablo is sticking around for longer they and and they went and buffed uh quite a few of his treasures sigil of hell claws of terror and hellfire hooves which i love saying um we're getting more mech nerfs. Both Meccano, Tank, and Grease Bot are getting taken down a few pegs, and then we're getting buffs to Pirates and Quillbore. Which is good. Pirates needed it. They really did. They really I mean, really I'll did. never be happy about Quillbore buffs, but pirate buffs were needed. <laughs> Again, Quillbore. These are mostly was... reversions. Oh, yeah, I guess. To like launch Quillbore. Dynamic Duo is back to launch Quillbore, I think. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, that, well, that's always the thing. I, I know you, you were, mm-hmm. you, you're like anti quill board, Joss, but I'm, I will always be here to be the counterpoint of it. Wasn't as bad as Elementals at launch. Wasn't as bad. Doesn't mean worse. it wasn't bad. It was just yes, there was something else that was worse. Yes, but much <laughs> like gradations of, of of much like gradations of being a bad hero, which is how they ended up with how much armor they have. There are gradations gradations of badness in Battlegrounds metas. So yeah, it's um I, the Coolboard need help. They they've not been doing particularly well. I feel about Quillbore like I feel about Demon Hunter. Whenever they're not doing particularly well, that's a fine state of affairs. Well, hold Why on, we hold on. <laughs> if you feel about Quillboard the way you feel about Demon Hunter, it means you will eventually break down and play the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is true. I did play a little bit of yeah. that. I'm, I'm excited about these buffs and slash or reversions. Um, I am worried that this may be the death knell for Mech. Um, it's feeling a little bit like they were so bad for so long that I'm worried again, uh, but also I'm biased. I love Mac. It's my favorite thing to draft. Um, and they were hot garbage for a really long time. Um, I was going to say, it doesn't feel like they've been on top of for all that long. So it's kind of sad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they, they were very, very good. Um, so when they were good, they were very, very good. Yes. Yes. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. <laughs> When were they buffed? This was in 21.2 August 31st. That Did you was ask a question and then ago. answer it in the same sentence? Yeah, he definitely it was did. rhetorical. Okay, I was, just, I was just making sure because if you were asking me to recall dates and patches from memory, I cannot mm, help you. Yeah, no. <laughs> so I looked it up. August 31st. That was two and a half months ago. It feels like about one million years ago. Approximately one million. We we've had so much. We've had an entire game mode launched and updated since then, as well as constructed, messed around with. Uh, also within battlegrounds, we've had multiple. Uh, that's why I say mechs were nerfed again because they've been nerfed once before. Yeah. <sighs> Plus the Diablo events, like it hasn't been quiet in battlegrounds since the mech buff. No. It hasn't been quiet in any mode, and then they made new modes to not be quiet in. Yeah, it's 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 been a it's been a twenty twenty one. The real twenty twenty one were the Hearthstone patches we made along the way. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> hey, it's better than COVID two electric boogaloo. Okay. It is, but again, we're talking about low thresholds here. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, it is. And we're talking about long run times, which means I think it is time to bring this podcast into port, which is not an Alterac Valley reference. I don't know why I said that. I am done. <laughs> I am happy to be back, but I am also tired. Thank you all so much for hanging out. Hopefully next week we get to start with Ah, it's so nice that Bobby Kotick's gone because clearly the board will come to their senses and do something about uh, this mustache twirling villainous man that if it was written into World of Warcraft, I would complain that this is too cartoonish. They went too far. I'll never complain about Sylvanas being written too evil again. (laughs) They had some real life inspiration with the mustache twirling. Apparently. (laughs) Apparently. Um, So, yeah. Anyways, uh, whoever it was that tweeted they add, co- added Kotick to Hearthstone today because of the Gallywix portrait, um, that was Twitter poetry. Well done. Don't remember who that was. Anyways, um, let's bring this to an end. If you want to support us here and what we're doing here on The Angry Chicken, check out patreon.com slash TAC. We want to thank our producers, by the way, Declan H., Jeffrey D., and Dustin C. If you want to be a producer, we have two slots left. You can head on over to patreon.com slash TAC and look up how to do so. Other than that, you can find the back catalog of episodes over at theangrychicken.com or the entire video archive at youtube.com slash amove2. You can see our shining faces and the history of my stupid haircuts. 
You can catch us live typically on Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern time over at twitch.tv slash TV, which come hell or high water is going to be when we record next week because it is American Thanksgiving uh, and I can't flex to a different day next week. <laughs> and Oh, no. Yeah. Turkey and that's, stuffing. That's the day. That's we'll happening. Be, oh, yes. We'll be eaten. We'll be eaten. Uh, Thanksgiving is also usually my, my favorite day to day drink. So... Yeah, I don't day drink often, but when I do, it's Thanksgiving. Other than that, around the table, Jocelyn, where can folks find you? Hey, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch. I'm at Joss Plays. That's J-O-C-E Plays. Also, go check out bit.ly slash TGI Extra Life 2021 if you'd like to support the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals. We're doing really well this year. I actually ended up raising my goal because uh, I hit it too quickly and we still have some streams left. So... Um, if you would like to donate, there is myself as well as a couple of other team members that haven't hit their personal goals yet. So uh, again, do go check that out. It's bit.ly slash TGI Extra Life 2021. And I'll have some more information about what streams we're going to be doing in the next few weeks um, pretty soon, hopefully. Um, we have to get some final schedule things uh, hammered out, but uh, we had a great game day. So thanks again to everybody who came out and supported us. Oh, you're so close to your stretch goal. Uh, let's see if we can't do something about that after we wrap live here. Uh, ridiculous Hat, where can folks find you? You can find me. I tweet about Hearthstone and I talk about Hearthstone. And if you like those things, then that's good. And if not, then I don't think that you're going to be listening to the show right now so that we don't have to worry about it. Uh, so you can find me at twitter.com slash ridiculous hat. I'm also on three Hearthstone podcasts. This is one of them. The other two, Coin Concede, we make the competitive side of the Hearthstone more accessible to you. Or Vicious Syndicate, a data-driven look at the standard metagame. You can find that at coinconcede.com or viciousyndicate.com. I am Garrett Art on Twitter. This podcast and every single other one that I produce can be found at amove.tv. But the thing I really, 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 really want to promote is Nexus Gaming News. This is the latest project that I have put together. And I have been busting my butt making what I think are some pretty cool YouTube versions of this. Yes, you can go find Nexus Gaming News wherever it is you find your podcast. But if you go to youtube.com slash amove.tv right now, you're going to be like, oh, they necro this old, not updated YouTube. And that's exactly what happened. And uh, also, the, the show has kind of been taken over by my journey through Final Fantasy XIV. Um, the last couple of episodes are seen all that. about that. And um, I'm really enjoying it. And I'm also really enjoying documenting it through Nexus Gaming News. Um, so we just put up a brand new episode that was all about all of the shit I wish I had known when I had started playing. I've learned a lot in my short time with this MMO. And if you want to learn, or uh, maybe you already know all of this, um, like a vampire wishing to be young again, experience what it was like to be a moron playing Final Fantasy XIV again. <laughs> uh, well, head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash TV or listen to Nexus Gaming News wherever podcasts can be found. That's going to wrap it up for this episode of The Anger Chicken. Thank you so much for hanging out with us for two hours. Until next time, fire Bobby Kotick. Job's done? His job is done, I hope.